Okay, it's uh, 4.30. I'd like to call the City of Kerrville Planning and Zoning uh, Commission uh, to order for our regular meeting. Uh, Dorothy, would you call roll, please? Yes, sir. Bob Waller? Uh, here. Garrett Harmon? Here. Don Barnett? Here. Michael Siegerman? Here. Rustin Zuber? David Jones? Here. Marty Leonard? Here. Thank you. Okay, we have a quorum. Uh, first thing on the agenda is visitor citizens forum. Any person with business not scheduled on the agenda is encouraged to briefly speak their ideas to the commission. Uh, please fill out the speaker request form, give it to the commission secretary prior to the meeting. Uh, the number of speakers will be limited to the first 10, each speaker limited to three minutes. Uh, no formal action can be taken on these items as the Open Meetings Act requires formal action items to be posted on an agenda no later than 72 hours before the meeting. If formal action is required, the items uh, will be placed on an agenda for a future meeting. Uh, item number two is the consent agenda. All items below in the consent agenda are considered routine or ministerial in nature and will be enacted with one motion. There will be no separate discussion of items unless a commissioner or citizen so requests, in which case the item or items will be removed from the consent agenda and considered separately. Item 2A, approval of the minutes uh, from the July 6, 2017 meeting on page 3. If there's any changes or edits that need to be made, please let us know. I move that we approve the minutes from the July 6th meeting. Okay, I have a motion. Do I have a second? No second. And I have a second. Hold in favor, raise your right hand. Passes 5 0. Uh, number three, public hearing in action, uh, 3A is a public hearing in action and a zoning change, a public hearing consideration in action concerning a requested zoning change uh, to amend an existing PD, Land Development District, uh, for attractive land consisting of 26.64 acres located on the northern intersection of Holdsworth Drive and Callow Boulevard. Uh, further described as land out of the Walter Fosgate Survey 120, abstract number 138, Kirk County, Texas, and being a portion of the remaining portion of that certain uh, call 303.959 acre track recorded in document number 14-05748, official public records of Kirk County, Texas. File number 2017-057. Uh, Sabine. Good evening, commissioners. This item comes before you this evening uh, because there are two uses that the applicant is requesting to be added to the per list of permitted uses, actually one per, one per tract. This is the uh, location map of the original property that, I, that I'll refer to as a, the original 214 acres that was annexed into the, pro, into the city uh, in 2004. When it was annexed into the city, the city has the option of also applying zoning to property, which was done at the same time. The, uh, the zoning that was applied to the property is a PD, which is considered, which is a planned development district that you have probably dealt with before. Uh, that is a tailored zoning distri district that is unique to each property that it's applied to uh, and basically has a list of uses uh, that are tailored for uh, what the city has, uh, has, has decided is appropriate for the land. That the planned development district zoning classification has the added benefit from a standard or a regular 
a type of zoning classification in that there are uh, items that you can negotiate within that within that district that you cannot do with your say your standard single family for example your R1 uh, or commercial districts so at the time that this property was annexed in there was also a development plan that was shown for a mix of single family residential with commercial along the frontage on Holdsworth in particular on these two lots and this is this is actually showing you out of those 214 acres the actual tracks that are before you uh, so Callow Boulevard that right now that's a relatively new road that that accesses off of Holdsworth to the west and to the east these are the two tracks that we're talking about tonight when we sent out the notifications because these two tracks are still technically part of the original 214 acres we sent notices to within 200 feet there was a little bit of question on the uh, some of the questions that we have gotten in uh, when we received responses and phone calls as to why the notification why the uh, property owners were being notified uh, when uh, in, in a couple of the callers that I spoke with uh, that they were actually located pretty uh, pretty fair distance from from these two tracks and it's because we notified within 200 feet of the entire uh, 214 acre track the two tracks uh, total 26 acres, a little over 26 acres, and what the uh, the PD that is existing on the properties right now uh, have a list of uh, a pretty broad list of commercial uses that are that are permitted, and those are list those are in your staff report in the in the tables. Uh, most of the uses that are permitted on these tracks are the same as as far as one or the other tract what the western tract shows is a hotel use that it would be a permitted use on that on that property what the eastern tract shows uh, would be fuels fuel service which is a gas station um, but hotels are not listed as a permitted use on the eastern tract fuel service is not listed as a permitted use on the western tract so the request essentially is going to leave the the basic zoning classifications intact that uh, were approved back in 04 when the property when all of the acreage came within the into the city limits and basically switch those so that uh, so that hotels would also be a permit permitted use if approved on the eastern tract and fuel service would also be a permitted use on the western tract and that is essentially the question that is before you this evening and that's all I have Okay, this calls for a public hearing. I'll open the public hearing at 438. Anybody wishing to come before us, uh, please step up to the podium, state your name and address, please. Hi, I'm Frank Renda, 1602 Silver Saddle. I have um, just a couple things here. Is um, what kind of commercial enterprises are scheduled uh, to be built in that area, and um, uh, are we talking about hotels, restaurants, shops, mini markets, um, convenience stores uh, with alcohol sales? Will there be um, any entrances or exits uh, to that area? that are accessed from Town Creek Road. Do, we, do you want me to go through all these or just want to answer one at a time? I only have four things. Do you want me to go through all four or? Uh, you can address them one at a time if you'd like. Sure, there it is. Okay. okay. Is there someone here speaking that represents the developer? developer? What developer is that? There, there yeah, are. Your question is not really something we can answer. Yeah, there's a, there is a list of permitted uses on this property. And what are they? Exist, and we can't answer whether those things are. You know, it, nothing that's not permitted at this time can be developed on that property. There's mm -hmm. a, there's a very long list here of permitted uses on there. I mean, already on one side of the property, hotel, motel approved. Uh, 
far as retail restaurant or the things that are approved, we don't know what's going to. We haven't. I don't think that they. So the zoning, the, the zoning that you're that you believe is is part of that now is pretty open ended. Well, it's not open ended, and it's not what I believe. We have a list right here of the permitted uses on that property, which I'm sure you can get a copy of. Okay. But we don't. We can't answer a question about what the developers are going to do. We don't know. They're going to have. When, when they begin their development process, they're going to have to come to the city for, for, for permission to do whatever they're going to do. But as long as, as long as it's within the code, within the zoning of these approved uses, they can pretty much do any of it. And we can't really address, at this point, any curb cuts, right. you know, any grass egress, those kind of things. The, one of the reasons that I'm, that I'm bringing up about um, access to, to Town Creek Road is because right now Town Creek Road is part of the city. Okay. In this city, the local people from that area around Silver Saddle and, and um, Muleshoe are taking care of, of um, picking up the trash from, from, Silver, from um, Town Creek. And we want to know, the more access there is, the more traffic there is, the more trash there is. And that's what's there, is beer bottles, cans, little liquor bottles of some sort, um, hamburg wrappers, it's trash. So people have been taking it upon themselves to do that. With m even more access, and that's the reason I'm asking entrance exit, with even more access to, to Town Creek, there's, there's would be more trash available. Well, your, your, your questions are valid. I, I understand the reason for your questions. I don't know who's responsible for cleaning up the area and picking up the trash. That might it's, be it's a city, it's the a city, city road. The city can, can, can address, but, you know, we're here specifically just to approve an amendment uh, of this plat to allow certain things in certain areas. That's all we're doing. And it, you know, we, we again, in those certain things, I mean, just to go through, yes, uh, uh, it's mini markets uh, and sale of alcohol. Oh, convenience stores and service stations are one of the approved uses. Yes. Yeah, which is, okay, so beer sales or wine or whatever. Uh -huh. It talks about food sales, it talks about fuel sales, it talks about a cocktail lounge, uh -huh. Uh -huh. retail okay. trade. Mm -hmm. The letter I got was mixed uses. So that's said, yeah, it's we're it confusing it. About everything. Is that correct? Well, the list I'm looking at is pretty comprehensive. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, there's a ton of yeah. uses that are already already approved. It's all the plan development already yeah. approves those uses. So the develop the owner of the property can go in and, and again, when they decide that to develop that property, they have to go to the city and get approval for the things they want to do, not for the uses but for the site plan and the way it's designed and if mm -hmm. there's going to be any curb cuts or there's going to be any entrances and exits on city front, on city streets, that'll go to the planning zone or, or the planning department to, to, be, to, to be approved, which you know, we it has to comply with different yeah. rules. I heard mm -hmm. someone say out there about where the list is. It's, <clears throat> it's in the agenda. If you have an agenda, it's in that agenda for you to look at. Just so that you, I heard someone say that. I just want to make sure that they know that list is in the agenda. The whole list is in the agenda. Yes. What we're referencing right here is in yes. the agenda. Yes, sir. In this, in this agenda right here, there's a list of all the. Yes, sir. There's no, there's, there's, it's not a big list what you just said. There's, uh, no, it's a, unless it's we a picked pretty, up the wrong piece. It's a pretty big list. Oh, all right. Another concern that comes from um, Mule Shoe in, in Silver Saddle is that with um, big uh, construction equipment, now, a lot of dust and dirt is thrown up in the air. When there's, when there's kind of, what is the, um, and it, when it's kind of landing over into the, into the housing development? Is there any plans to, to try to control that? Was, okay, that's just another line item for me. Another one is um, when big construction happens like that, right at the back door, then there's going to be animal remigration. And it's going to be wild animals. I don't have to really list them, but it's deer and, and um, the cat, raccoons and fox and who knows what. They're all going to find some safe haven where they can. And that's going to be the housing development. 
I'm only, all the questions that I would be bringing up all have to do with how, it, how all of this impacts the housing development. Um, Sabina, the, the tracks that we're looking at specifically for the <coughs> fuel sales and for the hotel are right there on Holdsworth Drive, correct? Yes, sir. Um, get back to the <coughs> yeah, there we go. They're on, on Holdsworth Drive on the east side of Town Creek. So there won't be any direct access on the Town Creek Road from these two particular sites that we're looking at. Is that Am I correct? Yes. That's correct. And if okay. you look at the distance between where that development is being requested and the distance to, to Town Creek, that's probably another 26 acres. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the well, well, typical. I don't know if you guys been around um, high school soccer or anything else. People don't usually park in the parking lot. They park along the road, which is the quickest way to get into into that area. Would be from Town Creek park on Town Creek. If there's not going to be a big fence there that's going to, that's going to prohibit access, then parking is going to happen on Town Creek and there's mm -hmm. going to be a lot, of, lot more traffic there. <coughs> uh, and, and another thing is that the, with big construction sites like this, as you know, there's a lot of dirt runoff and we're seeing that right now with the, with the construction that's going on right next to Town Creek. A lot of dirt comes there across in during rainstorms right across Town Creek and it gets down into the, into the uh, Town Creek Road, Town Creek itself, which is ultimately gonna end up with the, with the Guadalupe. However, uh, there are development rules, construction rules that mm -hmm. they have to follow. You sure. put up barriers, most cases. They don't stop everything. No, they, they don't. They stop the predominance of that. Okay, there's like a river running across when we had the rains. I don't know if you go out that way, but it was like a, a muddy with boulders, you know, like softball size uh, and bigger, running down across around a town creek and a lot of mud, which... This is coming from the construction of the new... Sure, that's current right now. The mm -hmm. softball fields, the fields and the, mm -hmm. soccer, and the soccer, soccer fields? Yeah. Even, even with the barriers, okay. yeah. Sure. Okay. All right. That's well, that would be something I think you would take up with the city services. I don't think that's something that we. Well, these up. are the concerns that that the neighborhood mm -hmm. that is backed right up to where this construction is going to be. Those are the concerns from that neighborhood. Those are valid. Yeah. Oh, no. No question. The, yeah. I mean, the, the two tracks that we're talking about right now are not backed up to your door. They are right there on Holdsworth Drive, just east of the bridge that goes over Town Creek. And they're okay. not going to affect, there's not going to be anybody parking on Town Creek Road for this mixed development use. This mixed mm -hmm. development use will be like retail, hotel, or whatever, and it'll have its own parking. I understand from a standpoint of possibility of the soccer fields, you think someone might park over there, but this particular item we're dealing with, I mean, it's, listen, we understand it's a construction issue, it's gonna create dust, it's gonna create dirt, mm -hmm. it's gonna create traffic. I mean, I live in a, in a development where they're building houses right next door to me and I got dirt flying yeah. over my house all, all the time. All kinds of trash, yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, but um, Could you put that map up again, the green one? Yeah, so up around this is, you know, you can see where Silver Saddle is. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, what construction is going to be happening up around there? If you're mm. saying nothing now within the next few months, that's interesting, but there's more planning than that. How, how far out do you guys look? We do not know. That's property zoned by the, 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 the property owner has a, I mean, until they come to the city with their development plan and what they want to do, we have no way of knowing what's going to happen up there. Eventually it will be developed. I don't know if it's today, tomorrow, 10 years from now, but you know, you happen to live in an area next to a, a property owner that has development potential. I mean, again, like Garrett was saying, I mean, there's there's rules and regulations for the contractors to to do what they're supposed to do to, to, to 
and have as little impact as they can on the residential area, but that's something you would take up with, I guess, the city at the time. I mean, I don't know. Do you have anything to add about being what we're talking about here? Is there? Uh, the original uh, planned unit development shows that uh, residential uh, is going to be built up uh, directly to uh, Horseshoe Oaks. Mm -hmm. I'll, just, I'll just speak from here. That's all right. Name's Larry Sutton. I live at 1605 Silver Saddle. Yes, sir. Which adjoins the first 20 acres that runs into the Calhoun Foundation over there. I guess that the uh, road is going to be called Calhoun Boulevard. My concern, more than the housing, the hotels, the mixed use, my concern is the pollution of Town Creek. I know years ago when we uh, tried to put the gas pumps in at Walmart, we didn't get it because of the pollution to the river. All this drainage drains down the hill, and I know you've probably all been out there and saw it, I know you have, drains toward the creek. So what we're gonna have, what I'm gonna do is ask the city to take note of the chance of this pollution into Town Creek, which eventually runs into the Guadalupe River, which eventually runs, you know, where. So the pollution is more my thought than anything. So when they get ready to start doing this development, whatever they're going to do, gas stations, oil changes, whatever, that the city takes great concern into the pollution of Town Creek. Uh, I don't know how they would build a barrier, a catchment pond, whatever. Well, they will definitely be responsible for maintaining uh, anything that they're developing. That would be my main concern, will, is the pollution of Town not, Creek. We will not get an approval of a, of a site plan approval uh, for a project unless they deal with all of those issues. So, so you understand my question and what I'm asking the city council and the city officers to take into concern about. Yes, sir. Okay, thanks. No, thank you. I have a question to follow up with his, because he's right about the Walmart gas stations not being in place what part of the process does that come into play when they know that's not going to happen is it at this point or is it when they're developing their plans to build or develop the lot no at, at the time that the site plans are submitted to the city mm -hmm. we also uh, review what are called site civil drawings which uh, show us which direction and the and the uh, uh, and how things like detention are going to be taken care of the the site grading and regrading uh, and our engineering staff reviews those plans so let me the, the gentleman that was just up your question about pollution the pollution you're concerned about would be again well you know what are you worried about getting down into town creek gas okay oil, your name is trash okay well i'm uh, i'm, I'm going to guess that there's not gonna, there's not going to be any That's mechanics different. Uh, there are not going to be any mechanic shops down there. There's not going to be any auto repair facilities or anything down there. There's going to be a, uh, if it's a fueling station, it's a, it's a service station, convenience store where you go in and get your gas. I, I, don't, I can't say this, but I don't think there's going to be oil changes. And in addition, in addition to what the city requires for a, for a fueling station and, and underground tanks to be put in, the state has very specific guidelines about what has to be done and how these have to be done to protect any spillage. So that, that that's a pretty that's a pretty uh, uh, tough development. When you develop a gasoline station, it's a pretty tough deal to develop, and you have a lot of guidelines and things that you have to get approved before you can do it. And I would assume yes. that mm -hmm. that's the protection because no matter where those, no matter where they develop a gasoline station, it doesn't have to be next mm -hmm. to a residential area. The potential for pollution for, for you know contamination is huge. So the rules and regulations they have to abide by are very, very stiff. And then also the city is very astute about impervious cover. You're going to have some hard surfaces here which create runoff into polluted areas like this. So detention ponds and retention ponds will be built to catch that runoff so that you do control the pollutants that come off of streets and roofs and all this stuff. But you'll, you'll have some of that happen anyway. Okay. Thank you. 
Yes, sir. All right, my name is Gene Delgadillo, and I'm part of the Delgadillo family, and we live here in this area right next to your R1A section. This is the Delgadillo property there. Do you recognize that there right. on your map? Well, we can't couldn't see, see where you're pointing. R1A. Well, we couldn't see where you're pointing. All right. Yeah, R1A. We know where you're talking about. All right. R1A. Okay, so my first question is this, and excuse my ignorance on this. What the 200 feet notification area, how does that affect we that are living there right now in that, that area? What does that mean to us? Are you going to impede on the property? I don't know what you just pointed, though. Or is the solid red line the end of your... The yeah, solid red line is, is, is the boundary of the property that's, that's, that's in question that's being developed, and the, and the dotted red line is the, is the notification Okay, line. explain the notification. Why they, have the notification? To, they have to go out 200 feet and notify anyone that's within 200 feet of the boundary line of the property. Okay. And that's what that line means, so they've gone out. Okay, so that that being understood, then then I, we can say, okay, that... Yeah, that's, 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 not, that's not an extension of the development. Okay. That's the, the solid red line is the, is the property boundary. Well, sorry for asking that question, because that. a lot of people that don't really understand that, they, they think right away, oh, they're going to come 200 feet into no, my property? No, that's no. the <laughs> notification. That's the notification. Well, area. sorry for the question, but again, I had to ask it, because I... Oh, no, 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 I understand. And there's a lot of people who don't know the answer that's to that. Not, so. That's a good question. I, you know. Okay. The, the second question, I think you may have answered already. My second concern was the current softball fields and the soccer fields being built. There's a lot of drainage and a lot of silt coming down into the creek. We live right on that bridge, right at that, that first water crossing right there. And I think that's a question for the engineering department. I was out there with Todd, when he was, Todd Pardon, when he was city manager and a crew of engineers. We walked that whole area. And when it rains, it really causes a mess. And again, this is under the construction, the, the whoever construction doing it, and the engineers, they're gonna have to address that because there's a gully that runs right through there. When it rains, it floods, and it messes up Town Creek Bridge. Your city department, your road and crew department has to go out there every time after it rains and have to fix it up, you know, clean it up and tears up the bridge and everything like that, but again, it doesn't seem like you're, this department or this council or you guys are going to do anything about that. That's your engineering department, correct? Yes. Yeah. Maybe you just enforce some whatever codes exist. But again, my main question was, and you explained it, the 200 feet notification. Now, one last thing. I do see where your mixed use, where your hotel, restaurant, and retail. Did I understand that in the future, and I know, you don't know, five years, 10 years, whatever, but in the future, there could be housing development near next to the Delgadillo property? Could be housing there? Could be. Could be, again. Jane, you have anything? I just want to know if that, if that going to affect your taxes also. Sure oh, the property taxes? That, I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know the adjoining Delgadillo properties and the mule shoe and saddle, silver saddle, those people. Well, this this is commercial property development here. It'll, it'll, it, it shouldn't have any impact on... On our property values or anything? I, I mean, I, I'm not a tax expert. But this is this is commercial property being developed, and it'll have it'll have a, a, a different tax. Just for that property. Well, commercial property. Just for their and commercial. It'll, property. Otherwise, it'll be based on the <coughs> on the value of the commercial property. Yeah, not the existing no, property owners. No. Yeah. Yeah. Good. I'm. Well, again, you know, I, like I asked, it's, it's their engineering department that, and their construction people who are building those sports complexes that have to address those issues, correct? There, I would assume if there's an issue with the construction of, of the fields and the soccer fields, and that's causing the dirt and debris to get into the town creek. It, that you, that bridge you're talking about, that whole creek bed is full of silt. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I, I think that's like I said, I walked that out there with Todd, to the, the city manager, when he was city manager, and your engineering department. I forget their names, but he walked almost the whole complex out there. Yeah, I, I also they, want to pass the puck, but I mean, at the same time, that might be something to bring up to a council meeting. Like, that, that's an issue that citizens are seeing that that could be addressed by the city manager at that time. Because city manager will be at the city council meetings. Again, I don't want to, like, pass it over to... No, that's a good recommendation. You know I mean? But I'm just saying, I think that they could maybe give you better guidance than, than this. No, understood. I, I'll, I'll take that into consideration. I would actually recommend you go before, before a city council meeting, you go talk and to address the those issues. The, the city manager. Okay. And, again, and I think you explained it again. The 200 feet notification really doesn't impact us. It's just about law, you have to notify people. Right. Um, I don't think I have any other questions unless you do. 
Okay. All right. Thank you. Oh, thank, thank you for giving you. us that time. Thank you. All right. We well, like curious. I will get to see those thyroid games for free. I'll just go on top of the hill. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> well, my name's Clay Lambert. I live at 673 Town Creek Road. And there's a, some points of confusion over this. So I'm, I have a few questions I'd like to ask you, gentlemen. First of all, on the agenda here, I see that this is a public hearing for consideration and action. I'm not totally versed in the procedures on this, but is it not correct that there has to be several hearings before a final action is taken? And is this the final action tonight? And have there been other hearings on this? Now, Clay, uh, different issues have different requirements for the number of public hearings. Hmm. I think in this case, what we're asked to look at and, and approve or disapprove uh, requires just this public hearing and action, this action that goes uh, to the city council. Yes, I see. Okay. yes. The Thank action you. that's required is a recommendation from this, from this commission and the, uh, there will be another public hearing in front of the city council. I see. There's a second public hearing that's required. Okay. Now, this entire 214 acres that I, I would assume is bounded by the solid red line Correct. there, how was that previously zoned? What is the existing zoning uh, out, outside of where the ball field and soccer field is and all of that? Plan development. Plan development. Just PD. Right. Just PD. And the plan development includes in this <coughs> the, the, the approved uses this, this uh, paper that we have here, hmm. all the uses that are approved for plan development are in there. It's a pretty broad, it's very broad yeah. opportunity to develop. It's a lot of land, so you have a lot of opportunity. So what you're basically deciding on here is One piece. none of that will change. It has, it's as it already is, Correct. with the exception of the crossed-haired red area. That's 26 acres. Right. And there's a use, there's one approved use on one end of it and one approved use on the other end of it. And what they're requesting is that they be flipped and both approved uses be on both ends. Right. They're telling us now that they're going to develop that particular section. Right. This to what? That's mm -hmm. what they're telling us now. What's behind that, they haven't decided. What's across the street, they haven't decided. Okay. And again, when they go to develop that, again, they'll have to come back to the city with more specific details and a site plan of what they want to do and it will have to be approved by the city before <coughs> they can move forward with it although the use will be approved should there be a large hotel and, and retail complex put there with obviously parking lots would the runoff from that go into city sewer uh, well it has to be engineered it has to be engineered <coughs> to comply with those codes okay and that that's where they get into the very specifics because now you've got a lot of property that's got asphalt and hard roofs. Right. So you've got to manage that water mm -hmm. properly. Onto the road, onto the neighborhoods, into the creeks, all that's calculated in terms of how much will be and which direction it goes. All right. And I think I have one or two more questions here. The current zoning for everything in that area is such that anyone could build a hotel or whatever on it, right? Well, Do you I'm have to? So. Okay, it's so. It's an approved use. Reason I ask is because I live just on the other side of these folks on Silver Saddle there, and uh, I'm going to have wonderful illumination at night from the ball field. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that they're, the 20 acre strip at the <clears throat> northernmost edge of that plat was previously platted by someone as a residential That's area. what it shows in the original plat. Mm -hmm. Right. But you're saying that the way the zoning exists right now for the, for the outlying areas, not including the hotel areas, someone could go in and basically build any kind of commercial structure that they wanted with, with proper agreement with the city. Whatever the, use, whatever the approved uses are subject to the approval of the, uh, the city for Type of, the type of architecture, the type of building, the effect it has on the outside area as far as illumination and, and noise and things like that, there are, there are 
zoning codes that affect what you can and can't do and when you can have lights on and things like that, yes. I see. I know that this is going to throw you a curveball and it's probably something you can't answer, but some time back there was a group that was interested in putting in a shopping center at the corner of I-10 and, and uh, the main drag there. Yes. The county, after reviewing that, was very much in favor of that because what it would bring in in taxes and revenue and this, that, and the other, even with some abatements up front. The city was vehemently against it, but now I see that this is going to be potentially a hotel and retail, that's kind of a broad term, that could be a shopping center there as well, could it not? Well, the city was not against the Gateway project, but the Gateway developers were asking for some substantial concessions without any guarantees of what that was going to bring to the table. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the... I don't know what the Calu developers are going to ask, but this is this is a, this is a planned development, and I haven't seen any request for any abatement of taxes or any monies up front or anything free. It wasn't that the city was not a, was uh, was against the Gateway project, but if you if you saw they were against the requested abatements. It was substantial, okay. and several several millions of dollars in tax abatements and other things that they were requesting, mm -hmm. without any specific. Benefit to the city. I mean, they talked about the jobs and everything, but the, the types of tenants that were coming into that project weren't necessarily, they might have been, but weren't necessarily going to benefit the city as much as they seem to think they were. Okay. I don't think that, again, I'm speaking from what I remember, I don't think the city was against the project. I think they were not in favor of what, funding what they requested. That what they were requesting. There was a bridge that had to be built, it was a very complex development site so there's no water to that site there's no <coughs> utilities to that site it would take a lot of dirt work it took a lot of dirt out. work well, a, lot, a lot more than just dirt work yeah uh, and lastly all of that 214 acres <coughs> every bit of it is now in the city limits correct yes okay so even the, the road that's going in there and all this that's all of it that's all the way. city limits yeah. Yeah, the city. okay Thank you very much. Thank you. Can I ask one more question, please? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Every year we go on water rationing. Now, are we taking into consideration, are they going to drill new wells up in this area? Or are we going to furnish water from the city to that area? Or do we know? There are you know that the water rationing is very difficult. We want to grow. You know, it, I have no doubts that we want to grow, and we can't grow without having water. If we don't have water, we can sit on our thumb over there and never grow. So what are our plans on providing water for this establishment if it comes up? Well, I think initially, you know, the water's going to be provided just basic out of the tap until they get the reuse water in place. Uh, which is coming from the water treatment plant uh, over to there. It already waters the golf course that's there. Right. It'll continue over to the ball fields. Right. Oh, so from the to the ball fields, we're going to have the gray water then coming from the yes. plant. Eventually. Yes. I would like to add on to that, on to this discussion as well. With a with a rezoning, not only is the question of use before you, and is this a, an appropriate use question, and this one, of course, is. The, the uses are pretty much already established with the exception of the hotel on one side and the fuel station on the other and that really is essentially essentially what the question is boiling down to is it would that be appropriate to have the to have those two uses on different on the other corners now uh, versus the ones that that were permitted uh, under the existing zoning uh, but the second question uh, that that would be a question of timing too and do we have the capacity in terms of utilities to have this uh, to have the area zoned or rezoned as would be as would come before this commission? That question we also look at. Um, we don't have uh, engineering here at these meetings normally, uh, but we do take the question before our internal development review committee. And uh, if there had been any questions of capacity, any issues with capacity, then we would probably be recommending denial to you. 
typically what happens when so you've already looked at this yeah. at the yes, sir. when the development infrastructure support for the this. for the difference what in what's what's being requested and what's what's uh, what's on the what is permitted today so we to look at question, that incremental his, his question is whether or not the availability of water will be provided as it currently sits was not an issue at this point based on the demand if it were an issue i'd be recommending denial against the the yeah, increased intensity when, when they when they come when they come together with a development plan the first thing i my experience is that the city looks at is is the effect that that development is going to have on the city that includes how many cars is it going to put on the street how much water is it going to take how much sewer capacity it's going to take those are the things the city's going to look at and if this city can't meet those can't meet those requirements they won't approve the development so um, but i'm asking a, a, a Pertinent well, question, and, and you agree with me then that we need to uh, well, take say, that into effect. Let's say something. The city is now embarking on what's called a comprehensive plan, which is to your question is a longer term look at where the city is going to grow and what's needed to grow in this city. That issue will be put into that discussion is where is the water and the power and the sewers and so forth. Right. If we extend, if we want to grow this area, we're going to have to maybe do something. That will be all explored. More wells or whatever. Yes, sir. We, we're going to have to do to explore it before we start allowing That's correct. building That's correct. into a development. That's correct. Okay, it's very, thanks. It's a very good question because the most yes, important thing for the growth of the city and, and the main, 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 maintaining the proper city services for the citizens of Kerrville is water. Yeah, you got to add police officers and blah, blah, That's blah, correct. blah, right on down the because line. So what happens is that as it gets developed, it, it increases the tax base for the city. Right. You put all this commercial property up. There's tax. There's it brings in more tax, more money. To pay for the pay for those what, services. What the services are required. Right. right. But my main question water was service, police service, sewer the water. Service, the water service. We're all very conscious of water. Thank you very much. I'll drink. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, any other comments before this uh, public hearing? If not. I'll close the public hearing at uh, 512. You know, one thing I'd like to say is really appreciate you guys coming out here and, and yeah, we do. Being, being involved, being concerned, and having the questions you have about the development because it's your city. So I applaud you for being here. understanding that you haven't approved it yet. These are just the proceedings to get to that point, correct? That's correct. Okay. I'd like to take this opportunity as well to formally introduce our new executive director of development services sabine Kunz. this is her first meeting so welcome thank you and i was going to wait until after the vote but i will also echo that uh, we do have a comprehensive planning process that is just kicking off and so tonight we are just focused on this on the smaller question really a fairly simple question but the, but it you brought up a lot of bigger more uh, general higher level if you will questions and, and really good issues and those are the kinds of things that we are throwing into the comprehensive planning basket and we'll be discussing at a, at a broader city uh, city level to as we go through the process as far as where does our capacity need to be where do we have issues what do we need to do what is our growth uh, philosophy and those kinds of things so we definitely invite you to participate and keep an eye on the paper paper uh, for opportunities to to uh, join us in in having those discussions as well. The question is, I brought about concrete and the water. This gentleman is real familiar with that. Yes, <laughs> Okay. Any comments uh, from the commission? Uh, hearing none, I'll ask for a motion. I make a motion. We approve the addition additional uses for each section. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, raise your right hand. Uh, passes 5 0. Thank you. And thank you for your comments and thank questions. You appreciate it very much. Um, where can I find that list for uh, the approved uses? Uh, I think they made, may have made some copies. Okay. Okay, number four on the agenda 
uh, for consideration and action, uh, consideration and action of a replat, uh, consideration and action uh, concerning a replat of a portion of, of lots one through six, lot nine, a portion of H Street, and a portion of lots one through five, block 10, J.A. Tybee's edition of the city of Kerrville, recorded in volume P, page 16, Platt Records, Kerr County, Texas, and being all that certain, 0 0.342 of one acre track recorded in document number 16-06322, official public records of Kerr County, uh, Texas, all of certain 1.357 acre track recorded in document number 16-06324, official uh, records of Kerr County, Texas, and 0 0.396, a one acre track being a portion of H Street recorded in document number 17-01162, official records of Kirk County, Texas, uh, containing 4.135 acres, more or less in the city of Kerrville, Kirk County, Texas, according to the plat records of Kirk County, Texas, located 1709 Water Street, file number 2017-026. Thank you, just very briefly, this was a replot that came before you a couple of times actually, and uh, our engineering department uh, had some had a specific note that got worked through, um, and you did, uh, and it was at our request, and uh, the applicant also agreed uh, to voluntarily to have you table this plat. It is a replat of the those river trail cabin uh, of the property, and there was a note. And this is the note, and it's also in your packet. And with that, we do recommend approval of this replat. That's all. What does this mean? Accepts responsibility for the storm drain within the property boundaries. Does that mean they're going to fix it? They're going to manage it? They're going to. What does that mean? You know, I, you'll have to forgive me because I wasn't a, a part of the of the discussions when they came before you before. Um, but I believe that there was some concern uh, about runoff of this property, and that uh, that there was a request to very be specific about, because the the property uh, part of it was was developed already and then a, a new portion was proposed to be to be built on and uh, to also have additional uh, buildings be brought onto the property so I suspect that the concern was that there was an existing runoff issue uh, so certainly with the new with the Anything new that's being added to this to the site, the uh, property owner would have would have to mitigate that impact, the new impact, but not the existing. So I suspect that that was uh, that there was an issue that uh, that needed to Is be that dealt with. The city's going to do in terms of engineer that site, or because I mean that site, do you know the site? Yes. Uh, they've changed the, they've changed the slope of the site considerably, substantially, uh, and I mean. Speaking of runoff in the river, it's right off the river. So, I mean, there's not well, there's already runoff on that side. I drove it last week. And all there is is a crushed granite for roadways. And uh, that were uh, several pretty large uh, creases that had already run across that on the bottom side. I guess my concern with this is, you know, there's nothing drawn anywhere that says where a a storm drain is going to be, how large it is, where the water gets diverted to, and, and some kind of approval uh, from the city. My question would be, I mean, this is a handwritten note that says the property yeah. owner is going to accept responsibility for the storm drain within the property. Also accepts the concentrated flows. I mean, we're being asked to approve something that we don't really have any idea what, what really the property owner is taking responsibility for what he's going to do. Would, wouldn't we want to look at some, like Bob said, some engineering drawing of exactly what he's going to do to mitigate these issues? Is it just taking responsibility for it? 
Well, notes like this on a plat get looked at by the city staff when we're reviewing the site plan, uh -huh. which can happen tomorrow or it can happen 20 years down the line. Now, this one, uh, the, the site, uh, as you've seen, as, as you've noted, uh, the site improvements have been going, have been ongoing, and, and in, in fact, will continue. Um, so, what when we uh, when we put a note on a plat, uh, what we do is then later on d down the line, as we're reviewing the building permit and the site application, the site development application, we will look at the we will look at the plat as well and any notes on the plat to make sure that there's compliance. The details of that get reviewed with the site civils that I was referring to earlier, which uh, which come in at the before before we will approve that development site plan. So this note is good to you, like you're good with it because this note to me seems almost like it's just like oh I take responsibility we're good. So like this is common practice on the plats. Isn't this already developed? Isn't this already almost yes. completely developed? Yeah, it's almost done. For the so most part. Looking at it when it's developed should be looking at it now, shouldn't it? Let me give you an example. We had the, we had the fire department here once on a particular piece of property on City of Acre in which we talked about some of the issues because of the elevation drop at the back. What they had have to do to get back there in case of a fire, you know, what would end up to their, their men trying to get into that building. And, and there was a lot of compromise made in this room with the developer to fix that problem because we knew exactly there were, this retention wall was in a, a barrier to, to fire control. So it, it, it had to be a give and take between back and forth. I think there needs to be more done on this property uh, personally because just the natural slope of that property, everything's going to run into the river, which is fine if, it, if that's okay, but I'm not sure that's okay. And when this first came to us and was tabled, there wasn't really any, any discussion. discussion. We, it was just said, let's have a public hearing. We're going to table the action. Yeah, we didn't there wasn't anybody about. here. Nobody spoke. So we didn't even really get into the details of what this runoff issue exactly was, what the problem was, how they were going to fix it. We're still in the dark here. Mm -hmm. And th this little note to me isn't, is still in the dark. And so I'm, I'm, agree with these other gentlemen here on the commission that we need a little bit more information about what are they responsible for what the issues are and how they're going to be how responsible they're gonna, for how, what are they going to do it's easy to say that they're going to be responsible for but how are they going to the property does look better i'll give them that they've done a lot better job with it i like the project it's just the drainage concern but that's just says it's so close to the river and and we and we don't have a is is mr Burner here, Jeff Burner. He's listed as a representative. We don't we don't have anybody here to help explain that to us. This is signed by Larry Howard, isn't it? Yes, yes. We we uh like really Larry's. Larry's involved with this project. Uh, yeah, it's his project. Yeah. Right. The the we asked the property owner to sign it because it's sure. because it's it's ultimately the property owner that would be responsible. The, um, the note on the plat basically sets forth that restriction. How that, how that requirement is met is, is pretty flexible and would be looked at at the time of site plan. Now, if there are concerns and issues out there currently, then we need to, we need to look into that separate and apart from whether or not the, um, the, the, really the question that's before you is whether the whether this replat meets all of the subdivision regulations. And our engineering staff has reviewed the subdivision regulations and felt that with this note that, uh, that the replat would comply with the subdivision regulations. The details as far as how this will be met would be worked out through the, through the site civil review with the development site plan. So is this note on the plat right now? Yes, this is this is a close up of the note that's on the plat and that's been that's been initialed and that our uh, our engineering staff has looked at and has approved and has moved 
forward. And, and it was our engineering staff that requested the tabling, and it was the property owner. If you'll recall, there is a um, there is a space of time between when we receive the application and when action needs to be taken on the on a plat. Um, so we did ask the property owner at that time uh, to voluntarily uh, to volunteer the tabling because uh, once the once that that clock starts ticking and no action has been taken then uh, we could be looking at a an automatic approval of that plat let me ask you this i mean if we approve this uh, and they have problems and they don't do this work since this is already developed does it come back to us no then the city? no then we would go then we would go into uh into code enforcement mode, which which sounds like we immediately go out and cite, and we don't. Uh, we basically will uh, go out and speak with the with the property owner and explain how this note restriction is not being met, uh, in our opinion, and then uh, work with him to to have him mitigate the issue. If he doesn't, then at some point we would have to go into code enforcement. But so this note does help us uh, have that tool. So this note gives you the bits way down line nothing happens you cite that uh, this note is illegally to the, for the city you can go after the property owner if nothing is ever done with this note this note clarifies the drainage requirements you haven't granted them a occupancy yet have you the the buildings are coming in a couple of buildings at a time and i believe that uh, some of those buildings have had a, cer a certificate of occupancy issued. There are some other buildings on that are shown on the development site plan that have not yet been, I don't even believe they've been issued building permits yet. So we do, <laughs> the site is still under development. Right. And we do have, and we do have other, I think that, I think you're getting at that the, um, that we do have some other uh, mechanisms down the road so it was our responsibility, Sabine, just to approve the replat. The question that's before you is uh, is the uh, approval or denial of the plat, and if the plat is is denied, then um, then I would request uh, the, that we would write into the record the reason for the denial. Well, right now, my reason is that we we don't have a plat. I, I don't have a plat, an official document site, that, site. That, that has plat. this note on it that I can see. What we have is a very small piece of paper that you can't read much of anything on. And, I, and I'm looking on this trying to see where this note is, and I don't see uh. that. So okay. um, we're asking to approve a plat that we don't even have and can't see the changes that have been made to it. Okay. And the, um, it was my understanding that you had received a copy of the plat previously, a couple of months ago. So it was immediately tabled. It was full. There was no reason. I got you. We okay. not really looked at it. Looked at it. The, right. Another question I have is we have no information why, why you're asking him to sign this. Why, we don't know, what's the problem with the drainage on the site that you're asking him to take responsibility for the storm drain within the property and the concentrated flows? We have no information on that at all. You know, we don't have a site plan, we don't really have a plan we can read, and we don't understand, I don't quite understand the reason for him writing, handwriting this in on a plan and signing it. I don't know what the problem is. You, you guys must have uh, information on why you're asking them to do this. I, I, I don't, I'm not understanding it. Okay, and, and I apologize. I, I thought that this was just a housekeeping, housekeeping issue that it had come before you and been discussed a couple of First, times. we've seen of this about well, they, responsibility for, for a, a storm <clears throat> drain within the property and concentrated flows from the storm drain. Well, what this note says is they take responsibility for, quote, this storm drain. So that means somebody had to say, this is the kind of storm drain you need on this property. And it's not there. And looking at the property, I'm not sure 
how they would put a storm drain properly on there. I'm sure they can. Not, I don't know where it is, I don't know. Okay. But the city apparently has looked at it and says, you need to uh, take responsibility to implement, build, and put in place a specific uh, storm drain. And, apparent, and because I came to this late in the game, I apologize. I, my understanding was that if engineering was satisfied with it, that, uh, that uh, well, basically it, the, the report from engineering is that uh, with this note, with this added note, that they feel comfortable that it meets all, all uh, subdivision regulation requirements. But yet we don't have a plat with that note on it. Right, and it was my understanding that you had seen it we, before. We had, we had a plat, but it didn't have this note on it. No. And we really weren't even able to discuss it because it was pulled. It was on the agenda. It was okay. pulled the agenda, so it didn't really even come to us. Okay. I mean, I don't have a problem with engineering approving it. It's just if we're going to, I mean, me personally, if I'm going to approve something, I would at least like to see kind of what I'm approving. Right, and... Yeah, like is there an easement in here or something that you're putting in here? There's, can't tell from this. No. Okay. How that call we need to see is something. It, it sounds like you need. Yeah. It sounds like you need an engineer to come. One of our engineers exactly. to come that speak be, with you. That would be very helpful. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So do we? I mean, it's not going to apparently not stop in their development. <laughs> no, they're, they're moving along. <laughs> Good point. So do we need a? a and a motion for is this approval a or denial? Or do we table it yet? Can we just? No. I would recommend that you table it and, and let us let us talk with the property owner to bring it back I voluntarily. Don't to, I don't want to deny so it. just soon have a table yeah, like that. as opposed to deny. It. Yes. It. So we get to table it. Do you want a reason in the minutes? No, not for tabling. Okay. Okay. This doesn't require public hearing. Uh, I'll accept a motion. I move that we table this item until we get more information on on what's required for the plat to be approved. I'll second that. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign passes five zero. Uh, staff reports. I have nothing to report. Okay. Do we have our next meeting? Do we have? There's something in the back law. Oh, there's a no. Yes, ma'am. Uh, to note in the paper that you were to uh, have a hearing and action on a, for a replat that's on Vantage Circle in in uh, Pittsburgh Village. I uh, wasn't on this agenda. I think that was last time. It's not on this agenda. That that's correct. That item is not on is not on your agenda this evening. Um, I'll, I'll speak with you about it after the meeting and um, and uh, let you know what what happened with this the um, your next scheduled meeting will have quite a bit of business on it uh, but that item is not a, and I'll, I'll speak with you about it after the meeting correct it has to be on the agenda and for some reason it didn't get on the the agenda over review Right. Sometimes it's not sometimes on the posted items agenda. Come out of the paper, but they get pulled uh, prior to the meeting. So has this, this replant been approved? No, it has not been presented. We haven't seen it. Yet. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Okay. And and I'll speak with you after the okay. after the meeting about. Thanks for coming, though. <laughs> yeah. Okay. If there's uh, no other business, I'll accept a motion to adjourn. So moved. That was motion. Second. And a second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, we're adjourned. Thank you. 534.